everybody, welcome back to another Sketch Friday short cook. Still wearing the shorts, despite the fact it is pouring down outside. And I am just under six foot, just to reiterate the short bit. Uh, today we're going to do uh, sort of a chocolate mousse-ish sort of a dish. And we've got a few dedications. We've got Clive, of course, for doing the camera work. We have got uh, sailor boy Chris Warren, who is 40 today. Looks more like 60, I would have said. Massive egghead. Tons of bags under his eyes, all that sort of thing. Looks terrible. Happy 40th, Chris. Hope that helped. And Aaron Pryke, he's 25 today. So happy birthday to Aaron. And also, uh, this is actually dedicated to Keely Howard Carter, who asked me to do something uh, chocolatey. So all of you three and everybody else, please subscribe to the new channel, The Short Cook, on YouTube. Shall we sing happy birthday to uh, Wazza and uh, Pryke? Yeah? Alright, let's go. Okay, so. Happy birthday to you. New soap look. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chris Warren and Aaron Pryke. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wazza and Pryke. Happy birthday to you. Right, okay, good, good stuff. Right, so um, we part way through this because otherwise it's gonna take absolutely ages. So ingredients wise, Clive, you just wanna focus on the ingredients list there and I'll sort of go through them. So we've got 200 grams of jack, dark, jack chocolate, dark chocolate maybe, uh, at least 70% cacao. It needs to be uh, a lot of cocoa bean in there. And what we've done is we've melted that just over here a sec, Clive on what's called a bain marie so we've put a glass bowl on top of some hot water and we've melted that gradually and then we've turned that off and we're just cooling that slightly but trying to keep it liquid we've also got some butter here eight uh, 150 grams of butter which we have melted and we're hoping that that won't re-solidify until we need it uh rest of the ingredients we've grated some uh orange so that we're actually making chocolate orange pots um, you don't need to do that, you know, it's quite nice if you put something in there, like maybe lime or mint or anything else that you like that might be a bit suitable. Uh, we've got some uh, meringues here at, uh, well they're not meringues, they're egg whites, kind of soft peaks. Um, they've got a little bit of sugar in there, we're going to fold those in in a while. We have got the five egg yolks there and what we're going to do with those is, we're just going to whisk them and we're going to whisk into that sugar just like that I think we can throw the uh, orange zest in there as well if we can get it out there it is there you go and we'll just whisk all that in together all right so did you get all of the ingredients there Clive yep got all of those uh, it, you can see that bit as well that's an important part of the ingredients please subscribe and a short cook there yeah <coughs> All right, so what we're going to do now is this chocolate should have cooled down a little bit. So we are going to whisk the egg mix into the chocolate mix. Get all that off there. It's very, very, uh, very precious, the old chocolate. And also, uh, it can be expensive. Um, but you can just use um, any old chocolate, to be perfectly honest. All right, so... Um, Take that off there, and we'll just whisk that into there. And hopefully, we're not going to get scrambled eggs, which would not be a good thing. Now, now that I've thrown the spoon away that I needed, just hold that there a sec, and I'll just get another spoon. Another spoon. And we'll have all of that into there. Now luckily, by hook or by crook, it appears that we have not managed to make scrambled eggs or chocolate scrambled eggs in here, which is fine and dandy because that is definitely not what we were looking for. If your chocolate mix is too, th too hot, um, it will curdle or start to scramble your eggs, so be careful. All right, that can go in. Get rid of that one. Ooh, that chocolate is very bitter. Auntie Sandra will like that. It'll make her face go all sour. Right, that's 
sort of thickening up quite nicely. Let's just get that off there, all of that chocolate mix. Off there, off you get, come on. Do better than that. Off, off. All off. It's not keen. Let's get as much off as we possibly can. Right, and we need to also whisk in the butter mix, which hopefully should knock this back a little bit and thin it back down. So just put a bit in at a time. Be careful not to slop it all around the kitchen. Could have used the electric whisk, you know. Come on! And the last bit of the butter in. Get rid of that pan and that pan. Right there. You should probably take your time doing this. I'm sort of trying to get through it. A bit sharpish. It is not as easy as I make. Am I making it look easy? No, I didn't think so. I think the recipe I looked at on this describes it as easy chocolate pots. I don't think they were telling the truth, were they? Doesn't look very good at the moment, does it, Clive? No, not really. We'll go all right in a minute, watch this. I'd go for an electric Big whisk. trick. Go for the electric whisk, would you? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's coming on. There we go. That's all right. Nice glossy chocolate mix there now. There she blows. Now I've got to get all that off there. And then what we need to do is... We need to fold all of those egg whites into here without knocking the air out of them. The idea with a mousse would be that it would be light and airy. Um, we call them chocolate bars. The air bits in the middle. Aero. Is it aero? Yeah. Aero. So it kind of supposed to have a, a kind of consistency a little bit like that, or it's supposed to look a bit like that. When you um, when you spoon into it. So egg whites in you can put them all in like that and then what you need to do is you need to fold them through with a spatula so we're trying not to knock all of the air out of here but we are trying to combine them together may take a little longer than I possibly thought so I think what we'll do is we'll have a little break and then we'll be back when I make this look better than it currently does which probably wouldn't be that hard take two Clive take two yeah, we'll do take two and we're back uh, despite my uh, lack of confidence there it actually took about another minute and a half something like that for it to combine I think it looks pretty good. Have a look at that, uh, Clive. Right, good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these little ramekin things here, these little glass, glass ramekins. We're going to get uh, a sort of a bit of a, what do you call these things, ladles. I'm going to try and get it in there without throwing it all over the sides. Although we might be a little bit out of luck. Try and get an equal amount in each one. That, that's not worked out too bad. Um, you can get a little cloth. No spare cloth, Clive. Get a little cloth and you can wipe it around the edge. Like that. And then what you need to do is you need to put them into the fridge for a minimum of two hours 
So we're going to fill all these pots up, uh, we're going to put them on a tray, we're going to put them in the fridge for about two hours, we're going to see if they're nice and set, and then we'll come back and we'll present one and we'll finish it off. All right? Thank all right, you. so we're back. It's two hours later and the chock pot is set. Chock pot life. Look at that. Not a wobble anywhere. So we're just going to have a little fiddle about with presentation here. And we haven't rehearsed this as usual, so this could go quite wrong. It's just uh, a little bit of ice and sugar on there, just like that. There we are. Get rid of that one. Now let's get a little bit of cocoa powder. And just move that over slightly. Put some cocoa powder over there. A little bit more over here. Fancy little trick now. 1970s dinner party trick. <laughs> Whee! How's that? You like that? And we're going to finish it off with a splodge, I suspect, of creme fraiche. Just like that. Could have done with so, I'll tell you what I could have done with. I could have done with some of the uh, orange zest, just to add a little bit of colour to it. And uh, that would have been, maybe a mint leaf or something like that. <clears throat> However, we don't usually do this, but we're gonna have a taste, because I want to see what the actual inside of it looks like. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll spam another one up for the stills, yeah? Well, they all look like this. When we're eating them at home, I do all of them like this. Uh, always, everything is always fantastically presented just like this. Right, so, let's have a look at that. <laughs> it's not entirely like the inside of an Aero, but there's definitely some air bubbles in there, isn't there? What do you mean? Uh, right, should we taste it? Have a little bit of that. A little bit of the old uh, creme fraiche there. Whoa. So, before it went in, um, off camera, <coughs> we had a little bit of a lick of the bowl. And we all said it tastes a little bit like a runny Terry's chocolate orange. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it's not Terry's, it's mine. It does taste like a Terry's chocolate orange, but now it's not really so much runny as moussey. Oh, man. That is stunning. I don't really eat sweets. I got to this size eating chips and pies, not sweets, not donuts and things. Anyway, that is chocolate moussey-ish. Um, Stay safe, everyone. That's a short out from the short cook. Uh, please subscribe and we'll see you again. Thank you very much.